If there's one thing every gardener struggles with, it's how slow soil life seems to wake up when you need it most. You add compost, you mulch, you water, and still, the ground sits there stubborn and lifeless. But what if there was a cheap, almost lazy trick that could summon fungi into your soil faster than any bag of amendments? The secret is cardboard, used in a way most gardeners overlook. This everyday material, which usually ends up in the recycling bin, can become the perfect fuel and shelter for the fungal networks that make soil fertile and alive. Let's break down why it works, how to use it, and how you can turn a pile of scraps into a thriving underground web of life. Why fungi matter more than most gardeners realize. Most gardeners think of compost or fertilizer when they want to boost their plants, but fungi are the true game changers. Unlike bacteria, which focus on quick decomposition, fungi are specialists in breaking down the hard stuff, lignin, cellulose, and tough fibers that most soil life cannot touch. Without fungi, cardboard would just sit in the soil as trash. With them, it transforms into humus, nutrients, and fungal highways that connect roots. These networks don't just feed plants, they also make nutrients like phosphorus more available, retain water, and protect roots from stress. By drawing fungi in faster, you aren't just decomposing waste, you're building the living infrastructure your garden depends on. How Cardboard Becomes the Perfect Fungal Starter Cardboard is made primarily from cellulose and lignin, the same tough compounds found in wood and leaves. These materials are exactly what fungi evolved to break down. Unlike straw or grass clippings, which bacteria often dominate, cardboard tilts the playing field toward fungi. But the real trick lies in how you prepare it. Whole sheets of cardboard will smother weeds, yes, but they decompose slowly. To summon fungi quickly, you need to create access points. The best method is soaking the cardboard in water until it's pliable, then layering it directly into the soil with organic matter on top. The moisture softens the fibers, and the contact with compost, leaves, or even plain soil gives fungi an immediate entry point. In just a few weeks, you'll see white threads, the unmistakable sign of fungal colonization, spreading across and inside the cardboard. So, here's how to apply this trick step by step. First, you want to start with clean, uncoated cardboard. Be sure to remove any tape, labels, or glossy ink. Then, just cut or tear the cardboard into manageable pieces, ideally no bigger than a foot across. Place a layer of these pieces directly on bare soil, and make sure to overlap them so there are no gaps at all. After that, soak them thoroughly with a hose or bucket until they're heavy and saturated. Next, go ahead and cover the cardboard with 2-3 to three inches of compost wood chips or shredded leaves. This cover layer acts as insulation, holding in moisture while feeding the fungi. Within two to three weeks, just peel back a piece and you'll often see mycelium forming. For even faster results, mix one part compost with two parts soaked cardboard shreds, pile it up in a bin or trench, and, you know, just keep it damp. This ratio ensures enough nitrogen to balance the carbon-heavy cardboard, giving fungi a steady food source. So why does this lazy method work better than constant feeding? Most gardeners keep throwing fertilizer or compost at their soil, thinking more input equals better results. But what fungi actually want is stability, shelter, and moisture. Cardboard provides all three in one go. It's dense enough to hold water, fibrous enough to feed fungi for months, and broad enough to block weeds while the fungi spread. Instead of chasing quick fixes, this lazy hack sets up a slow-release fungal banquet underground. The fungi then continue working for you, unlocking minerals from clay, improving soil structure, and storing carbon as humus. It's the kind of investment that pays off without constant effort. Practical examples of how to put it to use. If you're starting a new bed, just layer cardboard directly over the ground, 
add compost on top, and leave it for a season. By planting thyme, the fungi will have broken down much of the cardboard, leaving soft, rich soil underneath. In an existing bed, you just need to dig a shallow trench, lay strips of soaked cardboard in it, and cover with mulch. The fungi will spread out from the cardboard and colonize the surrounding soil. For potted plants, it's quite simple, really. Tear cardboard into strips, soak them, and mix with potting soil at about a 1 to 4 ratio with compost. Over time, the fungi will enrich even container mixes which usually lack long-term life. It's a fantastic way to give your plants a little extra boost. You know, there's actually a hidden benefit to summoning fungi with cardboard. Beyond just feeding your plants, this little trick helps solve one of the biggest soil problems out there, compaction. Fungal hyphae, those tiny threads, work their way into hard soil creating pores that allow air and water to get through. When fungi feast on cardboard, they're not just decomposing it, they're actually rebuilding soil structure from the ground up. This is especially valuable for gardeners dealing with heavy clay sandy soils or even those stubborn patches that seem impossible to improve. With nothing more than waste cardboard and, well, a bit of patience, you can jumpstart a soil revival that costs almost nothing. Cardboard may look like trash, but to fungi, it's treasure. By learning how to apply this lazy trick, you invite an army of hidden helpers into your soil. They'll break down stubborn fibers, unlock nutrients, and create healthier ground for every plant you grow. The best part is that it requires no fancy tools, no expensive inputs, and very little labor. If you've been looking for a low-cost way to accelerate soil life, this is one hack you'll want to try this season. Don't forget to subscribe to Hydrohaven and share this video so more gardeners can discover how simple tricks like this can bring soil back to life.